Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, from your favorite niche land website www.thelandgeek.com and today I'm really excited and it's it's because selfishly in a world where we can just say Google and Facebook and all these sites have taken away our privacy I found Randy Hughes Randy Hughes known as Mr. Land Trust and I'm going to grill him today because I don't believe that there's any privacy. And what Randy has been doing is he's a, been a full-time real estate investor and he bought his first rental house in 1969. And after investing for 10 years, Randy decided to learn more about how to protect his investments and not be a target for lawsuits. So we're gonna talk about that. Now, Randy has used land trusts in his business for over 35 years and says he would not own real estate in his own personal name. And this issue actually comes up a lot because everybody asks me, should I have an LLC, should I have an LLC, should I have an LLC? So please welcome America's number one expert on the use of land trusts for real estate investors, Randy Hughes, Mr. Land Trust, how you doing? Pretty good, Mark, thanks a lot. Uh, do you hear me all right? I can hear you great. I can hear you great. Good, good, good. Glad to be with you. I'm really excited to be on this podcast because I know it goes out to a lot of people that are real estate investors wondering how do you use these land trusts and as you mentioned, how do you how do you use them in in a, in, in with or in addition to LLCs? Yeah, Randy, what's a land trust? Well, land trust is really nothing more than just a few pieces of paper, Mark. Uh, it's really not as intimidating as a lot of people want to make it. Um, a, a, to form a, a trust, you just need two documents, a trust agreement and a deed and trust. Okay. And that's all, that's all you need. And you, 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 you create the, the trust agreement first. It's not recorded anywhere on the planet. And then you record the deed and trust in the, in the county in which that's what puts the property into the trust. So think of it this way. Um, the uh, house that you're in right now or the commercial building that you might be in right now had to be built before they put the furniture inside, right? Correct. So we create the trust agreement first and then we deed into the trust. That's the, the property, the real estate that goes into the trust is like putting the furniture in the house that you just built. Yeah, but why am I doing all this? Why am I going through all this extra effort well, you're doing it for a lot of reasons. In fact, uh, I, I've, I've been asked that question so times uh, that I wrote a booklet called 50 Reasons to Use a Land Trust. And if any of your listeners would like that booklet for free, uh, just have them send me an email. Uh, my email Randy at landtrust.net. That's an abbreviation for Randy at ministerlandtrust.net. And I'll send them that booklet. But so there are 50 reasons to use a land trust. But uh, let's let's just look at it from a real estate investor's viewpoint. Um, just because you put your property into a, a land trust doesn't mean you don't have liability anymore. Right. The li the liability flows through the trust to the beneficiary, and most real estate investors will make the beneficiary to their land trust the LLC or a corporation or perhaps a, another type of a trust. So the, the least expensive form of asset protection for a real estate investor is privacy of ownership. Privacy of ownership, okay. Privacy of ownership because, Mark, if you put your name on, on the deed of right. any real estate, the average American's perception of you as a real estate investor is that you're rich. It doesn't matter if you're upside down, if you got negative cash flow, you're rich because you own real estate. 
And that makes us, as real estate investors, makes us a much bigger target than anybody else out there doing business. Right, and so right. to mitigate and remove that, we, we, we don't tell the public that, we're, that we own the property. We put it in trust. Our trust owns the property, and we own the trust. Our trust owns the property, and we own the trust. Got it. Right. So I've got an That's LLC. Exactly right. And I've got a trust. Right. So I have two. I have two. Uh huh. I have two entities, two legal entities. I have an LLC and I have a trust. And the trust is one more barrier to someone coming after me personally. They have to go after the LLC. Is that correct? Or am I saying that? Well, wrong? yes, but even even better than that. Um, as you mentioned earlier, you know why you like your LLCs and why do real estate people use LLCs? Well, LLCs do have better asset protection than land trusts, but land trusts have better privacy elements than the LLC. Okay. So what I teach real estate investors how to do is to link those two entities together so they get the best of both worlds. Ah, I see. I see. But Randy, come on, man. There's no privacy anymore. Well, you know, it's a great point, Mark. The land trust is the last entity right. that, that is not required to be registered anywhere on the planet. No uh, you know, your LLCs are, your corporations are, you have to have a registered agent. People can look up who, who the owners are. You can't do that with a land, land trust. There's no land trust registry. That they, don't have, they don't file tax returns. They don't get tax ID numbers. So if you if you form a land trust to own to buy let's say your your next piece of ground that you're wanting to turn and make some profit off of right and you take title of that in your land trust right no nobody knows that you're that you're the one in control uh, behind the trust all they see at the title level at the recorder's office in the county in which the property is located is the title holder which is the trustee of the land trust not you the beneficiary of the trust. So, so, you do, so even you if I have my, my LLC on the deed, that's not protecting me pri my privacy. They can look me up, find my EIN number, and go out four-wheeling on my property, get hurt, and sue me. Is that right? Exactly right. That's exactly right. And that's why I don't hold title to real estate in an LLC. I see. Now, the, the, the other thing you need to be conscious of, Mark, is that, as you know, some properties are, uh, have more liability than others. And certainly anything that's not our personal residence is going to have more liability than just a personal residence. So as grandma taught us all, you don't put all your eggs in one basket. It's not smart to title all your real estate in one entity, whether it's one land trust, one LLC, or one corporation. Because right. just think about it logically. If, if Let's say you got 10 land deals. You put all 10 of them into one land trust or all 10 of them into one LLC, and then somebody does uh, take their four-wheeler out, and they wreck it, and they end up suing you. Well, you know, so maybe they get that one property, but if you got 10 properties in one entity, they're going to get all 10 properties. I see. So it just, you see, it just makes logical sense that you need to put each property into a separate trust so each property is insulated from each other. I see. Can I, do I, I don't have to do a separate LLC, though, because now it's going to get expensive if I have to do a separate well, LLC for each yeah. property. You don't have to do a separate LLC, and there are a couple of ways you can deal with that. You can have one LLC as the beneficiary of, let's say, two or three land trusts, and then form another LLC if you've got more property than that. If you have a lot of property, you might look into what's called a series LLC, Right, And that is a relatively new animal in the last 15 years on the real estate investing scene where uh, each cell within the same LLC is insulated from the other cells, which basically means that you can have one LLC that is the beneficiary of 100 land trusts. Okay. And, it, and if you set it up right and maintain it right, uh, uh, it's still not a nexus for a long time. Lawsuit. Everything is still um, separated at the LLC level, just like it is at the land trust level. Got it. Got it. Okay. So, so if, if any of your listeners, if any of your listeners are interested in that, I would just suggest that they Google 
Degrees LLC, and they'll find out a lot of information about that. Yeah, that, that could be your, your tip of the week, is Series LLC. That's, that's something I would need because, you know, I'm buying hundreds of properties, uh, you know, a month. And honestly, I, it, it would destroy my margins and my coaching students' margins. If we had to do a separate LLC for each transaction, we're doing volume. Because we're doing such, we're doing smaller transactions. It's not like, you know, we're doing homes for a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I had a guy call me the other day, uh, that was interested in my home study course that teaches real estate investors how to create their own trust. And I said, what are you going to do with this course? And he said, I'm going to form 1500 land trusts. I said, what are you going to put in them? He said, I have 1,500 different oil and gas leases, and some of these go well, and some of them don't go so well, and so I want each one to go into a separate trust so they're all insulated from each other. Got it. So that gives you a good example of how you can, how you can structure this. And once you get the, uh, the knowledge and the forms loaded on your, your computer, you can create all the trusts you want at no expense for so the rest you, of your life. Really, so you, like you, don't, you don't need to be an attorney. Money. To, to do this. I don't have to go to no. an attorney every single time. I need a former land trust. No, and if you it, it, if you do, it's going to be cost prohibitive, and you won't, you'll end up not doing it and not getting the benefit of it. Whereas if you create your own land trust for nothing, no cost, you just hit print on your computer, uh, then you're more apt to do it the right way, like as I've explained. That's unbelievable. So how did you get started in this? Because, you know, you're, you're a real estate investor first, but then how did you become right. Mr. Land Trust? Well, I, uh, as you said in the introduction, uh, I probably had 10 or 15 houses um, before I realized just how stupid it was for me to own real estate in my own name. And so I started researching how can I hold title to this property not in my name. And I stumbled across the land trust. And, of course, I, I, I stumbled into LLCs and corporations, all, all the other typical uh, type of uh, title holding methods. But... Uh, what attracted me to the land trust was the privacy element right. and the ease of which to create and the lack of expense. So I, I started digging into that, which was really hard to do because it's hard to find anybody that, that understands this stuff. Uh, they don't teach it to lawyers in law school. Only if a lawyer takes it upon himself to learn after law school does he understand how to set up a land trust. Uh, so I, I started learning myself, and I used them in my business for <clears throat> probably 25 years before – uh, I had other real estate investors encourage me to start teaching them how to do the same thing. And about 15 years ago, I started teaching uh, land trust uh, courses, you know, live seminars, uh, and then came out with a home study course for those people who could not attend the live seminars. Right, right. Okay, so can you kind of walk me and the listeners through a typical transaction where you say, yeah, we've got to have a land trust for this, and and the steps involved. Well, first off, I operate un, under the premise that every property should go into a separate land trust. I don't every, care if it's your property. personal residence. Right, okay. Every property should be in a separate trust so they're all insulated from the other properties. So the best way to do this, Mark, is to take title from the seller directly to your trust and never be in the chain of title yourself. Okay. Uh, you know, there are sometimes there are issues, especially with, with ground, uh, the, the type of uh, real estate you deal with. Uh, sometimes there are EPA issues, uh, environmental issues, and they can go back all the way to anybody and everybody that's been on title to go a after them. So uh, that's a great reason yeah, Randy, to we, not we, ever yeah. take title. My due diligence, there's no way we're buying an EPA problem. But don't worry about it. <laughs> That's but okay. But sometimes, though. accidentally, you didn't you didn't know that little stream wandered through your piece of property that has a, a t black tar flowing through it or something. Yeah, that's true. So that's true. It's it is just you know you never know. It, 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 you know if you if you could give me some reasons why you should hold title in your name, I'd be glad to listen. To save but to save are, money. But but you're not saving any money. I'm not because saving it doesn't, any money. It doesn't cost you anything to set up a land trust. So what money are you saving to take title in your name? Okay, I, so I don't have to record. There's no extra recording fees. Nothing. 
No, you're, the only thing uh, that you're going to record is the deed and trust, and that's going to cost you the same amount as any other deed costs. Right. Okay, so I, I, I sell you a piece of property, right? Uh-huh. And instead of, instead of it being Frontier Equity Properties, LLC, to Mr. Land Trust, LLC, how would that read? It would read the grantor on the deed would be your entity, or the, or the individual you're buying the property from, whoever's on the deed now is going to be the grantor, and, and the grantee on the deed is going to be my trustee and my trust. So it would sound like this. The grantee on this deed would be John Jones, comma, trustee for the orange and blue land trust number 1234. Got it. Got it. Okay, now, how, how, does a land trust differ from... Like I have a family trust. Yeah, what you what you probably have is a living trust. Yeah, I have right? a yeah, I have a living trust. Yeah, a land trust is a type of living trust, but it's specific to real estate. Uh, specific to real estate, it only holds real estate or real estate related assets, like uh, apartment apartment building, a same single family house, a commercial building, you know, a Kentucky Fried Chicken building. Uh, air rights, mineral rights, like we were talking about the, the guy who had 1,500 trusts. So, uh, yeah, it, uh, it, 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 it is specific to real estate and allows uh, only the holding of real estate assets in it. Now, whereas a, um, a, a typical living trust has no privacy and no asset protection, and, and you certainly don't want to title your real estate in your living trust along with you know, your, your silver collection and your savings account and the, the snowmobile and anything else that you might have in a living trust because then you're going to taint all those assets with the liability flowing through from that real estate. I see. I see. Uh, I'm in big trouble, I have to tell you. I've, I, I got to set up a, a series LLC and then start doing this and then putting everything in trust because... You, you, know, you, really, you really should, Mark. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know the old saying in real estate, it's not a matter of when or if you're going to get sued. It's not a matter of if you're going to get sued, it's a matter of when. Right? Has that has that been you're your experience? Right. Well, it has, uh, especially since as I mentioned earlier, we as real estate investors are, are bigger targets, so we get sued more often than anybody else. And the, the very first thing that that happens uh, well, let's let's just walk through this, Mark. Let, let's talk about how a lawsuit starts, okay? And how how the decisions are made to sue Mark or not. So Mark, Mark runs over Randy's dog, and Randy gets mad and says, "You know, I'm going to sue that guy." And I go to my lawyer and I say, "I want to sue Mark." And my lawyer says, "Okay, Mark. Let's see what's his last name." And we type in the lawyer types into the computer your full name, and if that computer printer starts spitting up all these ads addresses that are titled in your name right that you, my attorney's going to turn to me and he's going to say hey Randy I think we got a good case here <laughs> right now let's let's change the scenario a little bit mark let's say I go to my attorney I say I want to sue Mark he ran over my dog let's sue him for a million dollars my attorney says what's his name he types in your name and the printer doesn't budge the printer doesn't now, budge because everything attorneys trust the, right there's nothing in your name. Now, attorneys aren't, they're not stupid. They didn't get it through law school by being stupid. They realize there's a difference between suing and winning and collecting. You can sue all day long, but that doesn't mean you're going to get any money. You still got to have the ability to collect. And the perception of real estate investors is they have hard assets to collect upon the lawsuit. Right. So, now, if the printer doesn't print any assets that are in Mark's name, now my attorney turns to me and he says, Randy, you know, I'm not so sure we got a great case here, but I tell you what, I'll definitely sue Mark for you. All I need you to do is get your checkbook out, write a check for $10,000 to my escrow account, and I'm going to go after him. Right. And, I, and I'll send you a statement every month saying how much money I've spent on this, and then when I run out of the ten grand, i will ask for another ten grand. <laughs> right, right. That, that's exactly how the American legal system works today, Mark. And now, in that scenario, I got a decision to make that I didn't have to make before. 
Because before, if he's going to sue on a contingency fee basis, I don't have to write a check. Right. Now that he says, I'm, I'm not going to sue on a contingency fee basis. I need you to write a check, Randy. I got a big decision to make. Just how bad do I want to sue, Mark? 10 grand worth, 20 grand worth. That's no guarantee I'm going to win either. That's just the starting starting dollar amount. So you can see how just by not owning this stuff in your name, you can dissipate and eliminate most of the frivolous lawsuits that might come at you over your investing lifetime. Yeah, this is this is fantastic because I have to tell you, I, I've been operating the past 13 years since 2001 in the dumbest way possible. I've got one LLC and I put everything in that one LLC and I'm just gambling basically is what you're saying that I'm never going to be sued. Now, you know, knock on wood, I, I haven't had any issues, but this, why, I mean, if it doesn't cost me anything extra, why wouldn't I do that? It seems, well, you it know, seems it's, just it's, it's irresponsible. A, it is irresponsible, especially when you relate it to your family, your children, their college education, uh, a new house you might be able to buy for your family. All these things are at risk when you don't protect your assets. You know, so many of us real estate investors spend all of our life learning how to build wealth. And we never learn how to protect that wealth. And many of us lose that wealth from frivolous lawsuits that come down the pike at us and, and we didn't even see them coming. Let, let me give you, a, Mark, let me give you a real life example of how this works. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. And my next question is going to be, am I too late? Can I go back and start re-recording all my properties in trust? Yes, you can and you should. Because, That's what I'll uh, do. You know, uh, as I said, I'm going to give you 50 reasons to use these trusts, and one of them is just you know get it out of your name. Right. Uh, but yeah, get everything out of your name into trust. And oftentimes, I have students say, "Well, doesn't that can't everybody figure that that's my trust? And don't they know I've put it in my own trust?" No, because we don't know who the owner of the trust is. So we don't know did Mark put that in his own trust, or did Randy buy it from Mark and it went into Randy's trust? Right. You see what I mean? So there, right. there's you can't make the leap or the assumption that just because it went out of your name and into a trustee's name that it, that you're the beneficiary of the trust. Right. That's, okay. That's cloaked. That's hidden. That is hidden. So first order of business, get everything out of your name. You'll sleep much better at night, I guarantee you. Now, could I, could I actually get your course, give it to a virtual assistant, Tell them I own all these properties in all these different counties. Find out the process to do. Is it? Am I going to do a corrective deed, or am I? How am I going to do that? How do I deed the property out of my LLC into the trust? Well, one of the forms that comes with my home study course is a deed in trust. It's a it's a little bit different than a warranty deed or a quick claim deed. It's just got a little bit different verbiage, but it. it it creates the trust, and so you use a deed in trust. Uh, you have the grantor and the grantee, as I mentioned earlier, and you rec record that in the county in which the property is located. Okay. And that's that's it. So the grantor is Frontier Equity Properties LLC. The grantee is my trust. Right, and and that could that be your trustee and the name of your trust. So uh, once you decided who your trustee was going to be, then you would set that up on all the uh, on your uh, deeds and you could have more than one trustee in fact uh, one of the creative things I teach in my home study course is how you can create five different trustees out of one person uh, okay. so cool you know, because obviously if you have a hundred properties you don't want one trustee showing up as the same trustee for 100 trusts right uh, so we have to get a little creative in our in our use of trustees but uh, after using these things for 35 40 years I've got a pretty good grip on how to use them and, and, and more importantly, how to teach you how to use them and other real estate investors how to use them so they can cut through the education part and go right to the, the use and, and doing part. Right, right. Well, I'm, I'm definitely ordering the kit and doing this or hiring my VA to do it because I'm really exposed. I'm really kind of, you know, it's crazy. So thank you. 
Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I've, I've never, I've never, you know, all these years in real estate, I've never heard of it. That that's something that you need to do. I've always heard LLC, 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 but because I've been doing so many smaller transactions, I thought, well, this is I can't, you know, I'm not going to set an, an LLC on a $500 land flip. Yeah, it's going to yeah. take out all my margin. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a that's a good point. And I think what 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 the benefit here, Mark, is that. I'm 62 years old. I've been in this business for 42 years. I've seen a lot, and and I can I can transfer that knowledge back to a younger man like yourself and say, hey, don't let this happen to you because just because you've been in the business a few years doesn't mean bad things aren't going to happen in the future. So, you know, part of what we need to do is learn how to make money, but yes, we also need to learn how to protect that money because these. These um, uh, threats come out of left field. Right. And, and let me give you a real life example, if, if you don't mind. Sure. About 10 years ago, I sold a, a piece of real estate out of a trust. It just so happened to be the house where my family lived. And six months after the closing, I got a letter in the mail from a lawyer saying the buyer had to uh, put in a new air conditioner had to fix some flooring and had to uh, oh replace all the toilets in the house. There were six toilets in the house. He replaced them all. Right. And if I if I would just send them a check for eight thousand dollars, they would not sue me. No kidding. Yeah. I mean, where's that coming from? Right. Uh, that's, that's, I, are you responsible for maintenance after closing? Right. Right. I don't think so. So. So I sent him a letter back and I said, "Well, uh, I'm sorry, but you should check your files before you send out a letter threatening to sue somebody." Did you see my name on anything? Was I the seller? Did I sign the deed? Did I sign the seller disclosure form? Did I sign the listing agreement? Did I sign the termite report? Right. Did I sign anything? He sent me a letter back and said, well, uh, my client told me that you were the owner because you were living there. Right. Well, excuse me. A lot of Americans live in houses they don't own, right? Sure. So I sent him a letter back and I said, no, I was not the owner. Um, I believe the owner was some kind of trust. I'm not quite sure how these things work, but uh, it, it's some kind of a trust. And I wish you a lot of luck. I hope you find the owner. And you know what? I never got a letter back. Never got now, a letter what was, back. What was going on there, Mark? That you know, it, in my estimation, what was happening in that scenario is it's a it's called a shakedown. Sure. And that's what a lot of lawyers do. Just to. They don't ever intend to ever get in court. They're just trying to get you to settle. They're trying to intimidate you into writing him a check for 8000 bucks in that case. Right. And when he realized that I wasn't going to be a pushover, he went back to his client and said, well, wait a minute, Bob, this one's going to be a little tougher than our normal shakedown. Do you, do you want to pursue that or not? And Bob decided to go sue some other sucker instead of spending money coming after my trust. Right, right. So, yeah. So, yeah. So you see how that works? I see exactly how that works. I'm I'm doing this. I'm I'm definitely going to do this. Uh, I hate feeling so exposed now. So thank you, thank you. But yeah. now we're at that point in the podcast where I hate to do it to you, but I'm going <laughs> to put you on the spot and ask you for your tip of the week. It can be a website, a resource, a book you read, something to help the listeners learn more. Well, let me give you two, if you don't mind. Uh, one is a website, um, and it's a guy I've known for 25 or 30 years. Uh, some of your listeners will know him and some won't, but it's called uh, – his, his goes, he goes by Mr. Landlord. Oh, okay, sure. Jeffrey Taylor out of, uh, I think, North Carolina. He's got a terrific website for landlords and, and real estate investors in general. Lots of good, good free content. Mr. Landlord, uh, highly recommend it. You can get on his uh, email list, his, email, his uh, newsletter for free via email. Um, a lot of discussion boards for landlords. You know, there are all these uh, tenant union organizations around the United States, it, it, and it's to our advantage to, to get together and talk, uh, you know, what's good for us as landlords and property owners, too. And that's a great site, MrLandlord.com. MrLandlord.com. Okay, great. And what's the other tip? The other tip is I would suggest that your listeners, when they buy real estate, make sure they buy property that fits their personality. 
because not everything uh, fits your personality. For example, uh, early on in my career, I got into the apartment business, and I, I, after a few years, I realized that it just didn't really fit my personality. Uh, I didn't like 100% uh, turnover every year because I'm in a college town, and I own college rental property uh, apartments, and, and they, you know, everybody move out every year. So what, what evolved in my investing career was the interest in single-family houses, they fit my personality. I have a, a standard 80% renewal rate, lease renewal rate every year. So there's only 20% turnover. And I like that. And, and, and houses are easy to manage and I can leave town and not worry about them uh, falling apart or, or having the police called for some uh, uh, <laughs> problem at the, at the apartment building, if you know what I mean. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. All right. That's a so, great tip. That's a great tip. And uh, my tip of the week is going to be uh, go to Randy's webinar and learn more about land trusts in a lot more detail than what we've just discussed on the podcast because there's a lot to it and he explains it really, really clearly uh, on that webinar and and then it'll take you to the home study course as well. So you're really informed and it's crystal clear why this is so important to do and protect yourself and not be like me, a complete open target for lawsuits. So uh, if you're listening to this podcast now, I can guarantee by the time you listen to it, I will put everything into trust with Randy's help. So don't go looking for me. And don't don't think you're going to go, you know, quadding on my property and sue me because it's not going to happen. So Randy Hughes, Mr. Land Trust, I can't thank you again. Uh, and, and thank you again. And I can't thank you enough. I really appreciate it. It's been really enlightening, even though I'm embarrassed for myself about how exposed I am. But again, that's all going to be solved today. And uh, all the paperwork will be filed next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I hope you come back on the podcast. I will. Anytime, Mark. Thanks a lot for having me. All right. Thanks, Randy. I'll talk to you. Um, anyways, if you guys want to learn more, of course, go to... Uh, my site, www.thelandgeek.com. Download the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes. And of course, get this always informative and engaging podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. And look, if you want to buy some raw land, it's going to be in trust now, but you can acquire it from me at FrontierPropertiesUSA.com. And don't forget to go to uh, Mr. Land Trust's webinar. There will be a link below. Again, Randy, thanks again. And uh, we'll see everybody next time. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.